Welcome to studying for FRCS. This is Sai from the Mindful Learner and today we're going to talk about colorectal cancer with peritoneal involvement. In the cases in the exam it will come as a case where it, is, it presents as a perforated colon cancer and how do you manage it. As you know, stud, uh, please don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, uh, which is available in Spotify and also the YouTube channel. This will be available in both settings. Uh, and uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe as this helps the channel to grow. The majority of patients with colorectal tumor will present via the elective route. However, 2 to 12 percent of patients with colorectal disease will present with perforation, making it the second most common emergency presentation of colorectal cancer patients after bowel obstruction. It has quite a high mortality rate, around 12 percent. Peritoneal involvement at the time of otherwise curative resection for the colorectal tumor can be present in about 5 to 10 percent of the patient and 20 to 50 percent of all patients with colorectal cancer can develop metachronous peritoneal involvement. We will today discuss the management of patients presenting with a perforated colorectal tumor covering the acute presentation and how also how to deal with the consequences of that perforated tumor uh, afterwards which is the management of colorectal peritoneal metastasis. Colorectal peritoneal metastasis used to be considered as a terminal condition. However, with the strategy of early detection of the CPM, patient selection carefully for the cytoreductive surgery and hyperthermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy has led to a much improved outcome and even sometimes can be even for a curative resection than compared to those patients who has with systemic chemotherapy alone. So, patients who have a free spillage of bowel contents with peritonitis, that is a separate uh, matter and that needs to be dealt in an emergency operation. Patients with a contained abscess cavity sometimes can be managed with intra, uh, uh, intervention radiology guided drainage. Patients with free perforation tend to have the worst outcomes because not only they have significant abnormal physiology and they usually rapidly progress to the peritonitis with septic shock and which is why they have a high mortality rate. This, uh, the NIDA data suggests that patients with perforation secondary to malignancy do not die because of their malignant process, but rather from the associated physiological challenges of sepsis. So therefore, it is very important that the priority of these patients are the same as any surgical patients present with peritonitis and sepsis. Once the tumor is perforated, tumor cells are released in the peritoneal cavity and therefore they develop uh, the colorectal peritoneal metastasis. Colorectal peritoneal metastasis carries a poor prognosis and used to be considered as a terminal condition. However, it, the, uh, with the latest advances, it, the management of it has shown much more promising. Now, the other uh, cancer that can spread all across that we commonly use it for is the pseudomyxoma peritoneal metastasis from, pelvic mal from uh, abdominal malignancies. And the reason, uh, but there is a significant difference between the pseudomyxoma peritoneal metastasis spread and the colorectal peritoneal metastasis spread. The biology of it is actually different. The, or the hypothesis is the cells released into the peritoneal cavity are then subject to redistribution phenomena which describe the eff eff ex uh, to describe the effect of the gravitational forces and intraperitoneal fluid dynamics on peritoneal distribution secondary to ruptured neoplasms such as seen in pseudomyxoma per uh, peritone. However, pseudomyxoma peritone's biology is much more favorable than colorectal uh, peritoneal metastases. 
In PMP, gravity allows the pooling of peritoneal fluid in the pelvis or in the paracolic gutter, while the clockwise flow of the um, peritoneal fluid within the peritoneal cavity pushes the cells into the areas of peritoneal fluid absorption, such as omentum subdiaphragmatic places, particularly the right diaphragm. In the case of PMP, these non-invasive biology results in the visceral sparing distribution of the disease. In colorectal peritoneal metastasis or CPM, their biology is more invasive and this will infiltrate the viscera at an earlier stage. However, in the early stages of the colorectal peritoneal mets, they may have a more contained distribution of peritoneal disease or even sometimes a visceral sparing distribution such as disease-free small bowel. And therefore, a complete cytoreduction can be achieved resulting to improved outcome and some cases even cure. Patients with a CPM who receive no treatment will usually have a survival of less than six months if left untreated. The most common cause of death due to the indirect effect of the peritoneal carcinomatosis after the em emergency event have passed is our bowel obstruction, fistulation or malnutrition and not generally due to an overwhelming cancer burden itself. Therefore, after the initial treatment is done, after the initial acute uh, setting is over, if the patients are fit, they are referred for uh, chemo systemic chemotherapy. And the most commonly used regimens are Folfox, which is 5-fluorouracil combined with leucovorin or, or, and oxaliplatin, oxaliplatin or Folfiri, which is 5-fluorouracil, leucovorin and iri irinotecan. But unfortunately, the results are poor with a median overall survival about 10, 10 to 15 months unless further options are done in those patients who are a fit candidate for it. When it comes to the exam, the first management is the management of the acute setting, that is surviving the sepsis. So in the exam, you have to mention either the sepsis 6 bundle in, within the hour of diagnosis of sepsis. And these measures have been widely adopted in UK, which shows decreased mortality. Followed by which, depending if the patient is peritonetic, then the patient requires a laparotomy following a period of resuscitation prior to surgery, that is, if the condition of the patient allows it. Sometimes, if it's a contained abscess, then there is an argument for making an um, inter interventional guided drainage, uh, which will help to drain the abscess and allow the abdomen to be intact. And the reason for it, um, I will explain later. So in the emergency management, the surge is, uh, after resuscitation, sepsis six months. So first we'll assess the patient as per CRISP protocol or ABCDE manner, uh, start resuscitating, institute the sepsis six bundle, which is the um, antibiotic fluids, oxygen, lactate, catheter. Um, and uh, followed by, we would, uh, if the patient is peritonetic, then this patient needs to go to a laparotomy. At laparotomy, a thorough peritoneal lavage is performed. The site of perforation is identified to control the sepsis. Um, and it also, the site of perforation is resected. During this time, an attempt to look for uh, or and document any peritoneal disease present should be done. However, if the patient is unwell uh, and there is widespread contamination or fecal peritonitis, this might be difficult. So this needs to be made on an individual basis. After the site of um, uh, perforation is resected, if malignancy is suspected or previously documented, then it is always better to have an oncological resection um, rather uh, with an appropriate lymphadenectomy, that is, if the patient's condition permits. For a right-sided tumor, the decision uh, can be made whether to perform an anastomosis or bring out a double barrel stoma, depending on the patient's condition and the level of contamination. In the left-sided tumor, the decision is the same, for an example, whether to uh, do a Hartman's or for a primary anastomosis. Now, in the exam, especially if a patient who's coming in with peritonism and unwell, then I 
think it is a safe option to say that you will bring out a stoma. The reason for which is not only the fact that uh, uh, in the ex uh, in uh, the, the if the patient is uh, clinically unstable, then that will be the obvious choice. But also, if the patient leaks afterwards, then it, there will be a delay in their systemic receiving their systemic chemotherapy after follow followed by that. So I think it is a logical thing to say exam in the exam setting to bring out a stoma. There, the, it might be countered with the fact that number one, if it's a right-sided colon tumor, then will you anastomose or not? And if the patient has a very localized metastasis, otherwise clinically well, it is perfectly logical to anastomose them. Uh, but we have to also take into account of the fact of what is the patient's nutritional status, what is the patient's overall hemodynamic status, and also if the patient uh, leaks, then would it delay? What are the chances of it patient uh, for it, the patient to leak? For an example, that is the patient smoker, obese, and other factors, because a stoma also is has a comorbidity by itself. Um, in the left side, they can also uh, counteract that uh, stoma, that primary anastomosis is actually shown a lower mortality uh, compared that with the Hartman's procedure in a study done by Constantin Didis. Uh, however, uh, taking into account that when these studies were conducted, it is more likely that the sicker patients will have the Hartman's uh, rather than a primary anastomosis in the first place. So in the exam, I would go for a stoma, uh, especially uh, definitely for the left side, the right side, it will depend on the patient's condition. But if you say those things are in your mind, for an example, patient's sepsis, uh, patient's hemodynamic status, the amount of contamination, patient's uh, nutritional status, uh, and uh, also the fact that if there is uh, a leak, then it might delay the patient's uh, following uh, receiving of the further treatment, then that shows you have thought about it. And therefore, I think that is a safe answer in the exam. Patients who present with a perforated colorectal tumor should undergo a full staging with a CT of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis if this has not been done during their acute presentation. Um, their treatment should then be coordinated with the MDT process as there is uh, an input of many specialities will be required. Followed by which, uh, after the MDT discussion, uh, there needs to be a patient-centered discussion or a patient-centered decision-making where all these options should be um, discussed with the patient and because the treatments are very much individualized, there needs to be an assessment whether this patient is fit to survive further chemo and if the patient is fit to survive further chemo and does indeed survive and um, there is still um, then whether these patients need to be referred to a peritoneal malignancy management center such as in UK that is Christie or Birmingham uh, to assess for a cytoreductive surgery or a high PEC. carcinomatosis index. When you are operating on this patient, it is a good idea to document where the cancers are and um, how much spread it is. And the, there are certain scoring system, but the most common scoring system is the peristoneal carcinomatosis index, where the um, it is done by dividing the abdominal cavity into 13 areas or region by drawing two, trans, two transverse line and two sagittal lines defining the first nine areas. The upper transverse line connects the two lowest points of the coastal margin and the lower by a line connecting the anterior superior iliac spine. The two sagittal lines divide the abdomen into three equal sectors. The nine regions are then numbered clockwise starting from the right upper sector with zero being the central region. The remaining four areas refer to the upper and lower jejunum and upper and lower ileum. Each area is scored according to the size of the disease present, that is 0, no tumor, 1, tumor less than 5 mm, 2, a tumor um, um, less than 5 mm, a tumor more than, um, uh, a tumor less than 5 cm, and 3, tumor more than 5 cm or confluent disease. The primary tumor is excluded from the PCI score. 
patients who then develop, uh, who then receive systemic chemotherapy, and if there is still a residual disease, then these patients are then referred for cytoreductive surgery or hyperthermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy. What is cytoreductive surgery? Cytoreductive surgery is a surgery which aims to remove all visible diseases by targeted peritonectomy and multivisceral resection. The cytoreduction is achieved using the complete cytoreduction score, which is 0, no visible disease, 1, less than 2.5 mm, 2, more than 2.5 mm, but less than 2.5 cm, and 3, more than 2.5 cm. The HIPEC or the hypothermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy involves administration of heated chemotherapy within the peritoneal cavity via open or closed approach, that is laparoscopic or open operation. Chemotherapy is heated to 40 to 43 degrees Celsius and circulated via perfusion machine using inflow and outflow catheters in an aerosolized environment, uh, in an aerosolized setting. The most commonly used chemotherapy agents are mitomycin C and oxaliplatin. So when will you refer these patients for CRS and HIPEC? If the peritoneal MEPs diagnosed in patients who still have their primary colorectal tumor, that is if there is synchronous color, um, uh, a colorectal peritoneal metastasis, after, if the CPM developed after the treatment of the primary tumor, which is the metachronous CPM, and in uh, patients who have advanced or recurrent pelvic tumors can be referred for CRS and HIPEC, provided that their physical fitness will be enough to suffer uh, to survive the effects of the chemo and of the operation, and that is a very important discussion needs to be had with the patient. So patients should be fit enough to undergo a major operation and to tolerate major physiological and cardiovascular challenges and possible complications. That needs to be taken account. When we referred the patients, um, if this patient did not had any previous surgery, um, whether in acute or in emergency setting um, or elective setting, then all efforts should focus on establishing the radiological PCI using a CT or MRI imaging or through diagnostic laparoscopy when it is feasible. But this is usually done by the center itself, not by the parent team who refers. After the initial management of the acute setting, patients are referred to systemic chemotherapy with a trial of a time and reassessment, re-imaging and discussion with peritoneal malignancy unit depending on the patient's overall condition and response to the systemic chemotherapy. Diagnostic laparoscopy may not be feasible in patients who have undergone emergency laparotomy for colorectal perforation and non-invasive imaging may be the only staging mechanism. There is um, some argument regarding a second look laparotomy. However, to the last of my knowledge, it did not show any benefit on either or, but that is uh, so it's usually not done. So when these patients do go for the surgery, especially if they had a laparotomy already, they are told beforehand that there is a chance that we might not be able to progress because the disease has progressed too far. The landmark trial for the effectiveness of the CRS and HIPEC is um, a eight-year randomized trial, which was done by Verbal BJ, where 105 patients were randomized and the median survival rate in the systemic chemotherapy group were 12 months compared to the uh, almost uh, two years, uh, that is 22.4 months in the CRS and the HIPEC group. Completeness of cytoreduction and extent of peritoneal involvement were independent predictors of better outcomes, and the updated follow-up study was published in 2008, confirmed the initial result. In addition, the five-year survival of the CRS and HIPEC groups with a complete cytoreduction was 45%, which is comparable to that of the hepatic metastectomy for colorectal cancers. So 
CRS and HIPEC are now firmly established treatment for patients with colorectal peritoneal metastasis. And with this procedure, long-term disease control can be achieved with sometimes five-year survival rate can be about 45 to 50% in few selected cases. So about one-fifth of patients with colorectal cancer will present as an emergency. The main emergency presentations are obstruction and perforation of um, the colorectal cancer. Uh, the acute management of these patients with a perforated colorectal cancer is similar for any cause of colonic perforation, with the key is to get through the patient through the acute admission safely and efficiently. Once the, uh, the acute setting has passed, we manage the perforated colorectal malignancy um, uh, and therefore uh, ma manage it accordingly. So awareness of the risk, early, early detection of the colorectal peritoneal mets with the strategy of CRS and HIPEC in carefully selected patient results in good outcome and even curing some cases and has shown to be superior than just systemic chemotherapy. I hope you found this episode uh, useful. Please uh, leave a comment and like and subscribe. I hope to see you soon and good luck for your exams.